Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are following us live on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. We continue to grow the audience and get the message out to as many people as possible. However, what we'd love to have you do is download the podcast. We, again, appreciate those that are following us on Facebook, but the best way to listen to the show at your convenience is to download the podcast. You could do that by going to iTunes, just type in Real Estate Radio Live, or you could go to Google+, Plus, Stitcher, any of those places that you get a podcast, and you could even go to our website, reradiolive.com, and you could just download the podcast there as well. For those that followed the show for almost eight years, you know the focus is education and information. However, I'm also pleased to continue from time to time to have people on what we call our giving back segment. So we do segments from time to time with a focus to give back to the community in different ways. It could be to help organizations, could be to help raise money for certain causes, diseases, all kinds of different things. But as a community, even though this is a real estate radio show, you've heard me say this before, all of us live in the same communities. We help each other. We want to try to help each other in any way we can. So it's all related. It's all tied in where we go to school, where we live, where we finance, our entire community. So with that, again, we try to do as much as we can on our show to give people those opportunities to express the things that they are working hard for and the things that are dear to their heart and some of the things that have affected them personally and their family as well. So with that, just uh, I'll introduce my guests in just a minute, but just a reminder, again, to get the podcast, it is reradiolive.com, and if you need to reach me during the week, you can email joe at reradiolive.com. All right, let me invite my guests in today. It is Karen, Jennifer, and they're nephron- nephrotic syndrome. Is that right? Nephrotic. Yes, our kids both have nephrotic, nephrotic syndrome. syndrome. Right. We're representing Nefcure Kidney, Nef-Cure Inter- Kidney. International. Right, yes. that's what I'll be sure. So... We had Kara on, uh, it was a couple weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. We had her on a couple weeks ago. She did a great job, and she got so excited about the opportunity that she invited her friend Jennifer on today, (laughs) which both have a tremendous story. So what I'd like to do is, if I could have both of you take a couple minutes, and I know, Kara, you shared it with us a couple weeks ago, take a couple minutes to share your story with the audience, you know, how it affected you, your family, your son, and then I'll have Jennifer do the same. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much, You're Joe. Welcome. So excited to get to do this again. Yes. So my son was diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome when he was two years old. He's 18 years old now, just went off to college. His struggle with nephrotic syndrome has been really long, hard, and mm-hmm. relentless. He was just a little guy and started having problems that I didn't really realize what was going on with mm-hmm. his body. Just noticed some changes that are now I've learned pretty typical with nephrotic syndrome and I took him to the doctor and we got lucky. Our pediatrician had some experience in the areas of kidneys, Mm -hmm. nephrotic, nep means kidneys. And so he was able to diagnose him relatively Mm -hmm. quickly with nephrotic syndrome. The first line of treatment is prednisone. And just seeing your little child on high Mm -hmm. doses of prednisone is no fun. And Christian has proven to be steroid dependent. So he has to be on that to be in remission. He's been on like five or six different immunosuppressant drugs, Mm. which suppress his immune system and cause him to be very sick. He spent several weeks in the hospital with a bad case of C. diff a couple of years ago during the summer, and that's a very serious colon infection as a result of, you know, his weakened immune system. So it's been a long and hard journey for our family. My husband and I, we have three other kids, and everyone has been affected by nephrotic syndrome. I'll bet. So, Yeah. The whole family. And then the some. whole family, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you again, Karen. Thanks for being on, and oh. thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. Jennifer, give us an overview of your story and you know what you're going through and your family and your daughter. And Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Joe, for inviting us. You're welcome. Um, my daughter, Elena, is uh, 12 years old. 
when she was two and a half years old, she was waking up in the morning with swollen eyes, and she thought that her face was angry with her. And the doctor had said that it was probably an allergic reaction, Mm -hmm. and nothing had changed in the home. So I grew to be quite worried by the third morning. So I drove to the emergency, and after a really simple routine urine sample, pee in a cup, the Mm -hmm. doctors put a little paper strip in the urine, and where it was able to see that there was protein in there. And from that point, the nephrotic doctors came in and and labeled her minimal change disease nephrotic syndrome. And for the following three or so years, uh, she really struggled on on her medications, a lot of side effects. They weren't really holding her healthy. At that point, we got a kidney biopsy where they go in the back and they take a little snippet of the kidney and under a microscope, they could see that there was some scarring (coughs) there. And what that showed was that she actually had something called FSGS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, wow. and the sclerosis pertaining to the, the scarring of the mm-hmm. kidney filters, which is why the protein was, was spilling through. They mm-hmm. weren't working properly. So in Elena's case, the FSGS is what was causing the nephrotic syndrome symptoms. After her diagnosis, what we knew what we were dealing with, Elena was on steroids, and anyone who's had children on prednisone mm-hmm. knows it's an absolute nightmare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the mood swings, the way they look. We couldn't see our daughter anymore. Uh, we forgot what she looked like mm-hmm. for a couple years. We were able to get her off the steroids with a new treatment, and that seemed to be holding. And at that time, it was 2010, mm-hmm. and Elena was four and a half, and we moved to California from Canada. Okay. And a few years later, she had a really bad relapse. And it unfortunately coincided with starting second grade. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But fortunately, that same year, I was out for a walk and rounded the corner. And that's where I I met up with Kara. (laughs) And she had just (coughs) started this uh, NEFCURE walk, the Bay Area NEFCURE walk. And I couldn't believe my eyes that this was just around the corner yeah, from my house. What a great story. Yeah, and I it really met is. Remarkable people. And Karen and I have been good friends ever since and supporting each other. That's great. Thanks for sharing your story. You know, as you guys tell the story, the one thing for anybody that has children, and certainly in general, any kind of medication, you know, the pregnisone and any of these types of things, even in adults or. No matter, you see the effects that they have, Mm -hmm. but there's something about the smaller children, the children, right, when they have to subject to this, not that we don't feel bad for the adults and most of us that have to deal with some of this, but it's something that touches your heart and is actually a little different when you see younger children suffer. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see anybody suffer by any means, but younger children, when you see them suffer, it is tougher. And I commend you guys for, you know, having the strength to get together and then form this committee and this organization. So let's talk a little bit about that, too, because there's no, you know, um, I should say, what am I looking for? Um, Not surprises, but there's it's more an example that you guys came together the way you met. And now, if you can, share with us, the audience, what you've done by bringing this event to the Bay Area Talk a little bit about, in general, the organization and then now coming to the Bay Area. Sure, definitely. And Jen, chime in. So, yeah, the organization that we volunteer for is NEFCURE Kidney Mm -hmm. International, and they're the only organization committed exclusively to funding research, bringing clinical trials with patients, with doctors Mm -hmm. to help find better treatment options and ultimately a cure for Mm -hmm. nephrotic syndrome and FSGS. And with the support of NEFCURE, Jen and myself and several other of our dear, dear friends, we are bringing the Silicon Valley Pig Jig to San Jose Giants Muni Stadium on October 6th. And it's going to be a lot of fun, right, Jen? Get your tickets. (laughs) That's right. Get your tickets. We've got general admission tickets. We're going to have a beer garden. We've got live music, a lot of great bands, some local bands, five different bands playing KRTY radio station is yeah. helping to support us. And it's just, we're bringing a lot of patient families to the event, too. Jen's been helping mm-hmm. to coordinate that. So there'll be other patient families there. Yeah, that's great. I probably asked you this last time, Kara. How many people participate? I mean, how many do you see in the Bay Area that are affected by the same thing that you guys are dealing with? You know, there aren't a lot. Yeah. But just in the Willow Glen area where yeah. we, we live, we're actually neighbors. 
I know. Yeah. Which well, I that makes like. three of us. Yeah. I'm a yeah. little one, oh, too. I love it. <laughs> so there's Kara and I with our children. Uh-huh. Um, there's another woman and her son who are wow. in that area. No He's kidding. off to college now. So we're the three that are most local. Sure. But there are roughly around nine families mm-hmm. that are in the Bay Area okay. that we know of. Wonderful. That we know that you there's love. others out right. there. And they're we, coming and they're going to oh, participate. Yeah. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> That's really good. So talk a little bit about, to give the website out, the information. And you just mentioned people could donate money. Yep. They could show up individually. Mm-hmm. There's sponsorships available yep. at different degrees, different levels. So talk for a couple minutes about that and give the website and information sure. how they could access that. Sure. <coughs> so the website is Silicon Valley Pig Jig. Go there. Check it out. You'll see the music lineup. There are corporate sponsorships available. We are currently working on like signage and that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we'll be wrapping that up soon. There's tickets available for the general public. It's just $20 to get into the door Um, and then there's different levels of tickets what else Jen it's a municipal stadium right yeah San Jose Giants stomping grounds I know that is your old stomping grounds it's a beautiful (laughs) field out there that's a great place to have it a great venue yes to have that at that's for sure and last time we talked about volunteers. So are you guys always looking for people to help let's say you know because a lot of people would love to volunteer oh yes Please, please, please. Okay. We need this. This We are volunteers. We are counting on the support right. of the community and people to volunteer. And there is a tab. If you go to the website, Silicon Valley Pig Jig, mm-hmm. you'll see the volunteer tab. And it's a quick, easy form that you can just sign up. And we've got some volunteer committee. They're great gals that are helping us. They'll reach out to yeah. you. You can pick the time frame that you want to volunteer, mm-hmm. 8 to 12 or oh, great. Uh, okay. other increments of time. Mm-hmm. And you'll be looked after. We'll get some, get you some food and some drinks and yep. get you into the concert as well. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. I probably asked you this last time, but Pig Jig, right? that in itself, you'd go to the website, at least check it out, and go support a name like that, just in general. I'm guessing it has something to do with the barbecue experience and the jig. What is the... Yeah. Actually, we are not the creators of the pig okay. jig. Can as you give me any history is, behind that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is really cute. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Very <clears throat> trendy. Tampa Bay, the Tampa Tampa Pig Pig Jig in Tampa, Florida. There's a young man there who has FSGS, Mm -hmm. nephrotic syndrome. And about eight years ago, he was really suffering. And a group of friends thought, let's do something for our buddy. And -hmm. in their backyard, they had a a friend and family barbecue competition. And I think they raised something like, I'm going to say 50 bucks. Yeah, maybe a thousand the first year or something. And it grew so quickly. At this point, if you go onto the Tampa, Mm -hmm. Florida, Tampa City website, the pig jig pops up as the main attraction. Oh, my gosh. They're raising a million dollars each year for for Nefcare Kitty International. That's so good. So we we went down there, um, was it a year ago or was that two years ago now? Yeah, um, last to, year. You know, to to see it, mm-hmm. and we fell in love with the event, and Kara's headed it up and <laughs> brought it to the South Bay, brought the South to the South Bay. That's, That's right. Great. Yeah. It's great to hear. And the guys from Tampa will be there, too. They Some will. of the guys are coming mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Oh, very so. good. Very good. So tell us, if you can, just for a minute, too, about your son and your daughter, like, how are they doing now? I know your son's in college, and mm-hmm. so maybe you could give us kind of an overview of how he's doing, how's adapting, and how's mom and the rest of the family adapting. And the same, Jennifer, I'd like to hear a little bit about, you know, how your daughter's doing in general, basic, you know, if she's going to school, playing sports, kind of, you know, how she's adapted and how he is adapted. Sure. I, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, no, Christian is away at school, and I think he's doing well. You know, he <laughs> does reach out to me periodically, and it's all I can do to not first say, did you take your medicine? I, I bet. I, know. I have to just ask him and not ask him anything because they don't like questions, but um, he seems really happy. I do get nervous. I mean, he does have a sore throat last time Mm. I talked to him. And like Jen said, any little thing makes um, you nervous. It does because that can lead to a full on relapse and everything. So, but I'm just grateful for him to have the opportunity to go off to college Mm -hmm. in a different state. I mean, he's managing his own medicines, having to figure out picking them up from the pharmacy and, you know, making out his medicine for the week He does have the support of some of my family close by, which is great and does give me a little Mm -hmm. bit of peace of mind. But we're just grateful that he gets to be a normal kid. That's That's all he's ever wanted. That's good. Good to hear. Jennifer? Yeah, so Elena's in eighth grade and is in competitive soccer. So she's actually a very 
strong and happy young girl. Mm -hmm. um, you would never know that she had a disease such as FSGS by looking at her. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she's been in remission for three years. So we are always anticipating that dreaded day where mm -hmm. she tests her, her urine or pee in the morning. And we're going to find some protein in there. But so far, so good. But like Kara and Chisha and all the other families, it's, have you tested your pee this morning? <laughs> Why did you not test your pee? Make sure to do that in the morning. Do you need an it's alarm for that? has got to be an app. Isn't there an app for that? There should be. She has an iCal with okay, good. alarms on <clears throat> that go off good. at all hours. But every morning at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. her alarm goes off. She pops her two pills. 6 p.m., same thing, three mm -hmm. pills down the hatch. So that's her responsibility now, and she's, she's doing a great job. Got it. Do you have any other children, Jennifer? I have a eight-year-old okay. in fourth grade. And so how's the family adapted, adjusted, what mm -hmm. kind of effect? Because, you know, we forget sometimes, Karen and I talked about this, and I know that anytime something to this extent, it affects everybody. It everybody does. in different ways. Yeah. There's like a an unspoken cloud of fear mm. that kind of lingers but it, it's one of those things that I can't speak for everybody, but it, you just deal. Yep. You just, I don't wake up in the morning and think, oh, no, what's going to happen? Right. It's just another day. We get up. Of course, did you test your pee? <laughs> <laughs> and then I get on with the rest of my day and I think of other things. Yeah. But it is definitely my first concern yeah. just to make sure that she's safe and then I can let her go. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it is, it's always a worry for traveling if she's got a cough. You know, if she didn't brush her teeth the day before, we have to worry about, you know, getting a little mm -hmm. gingivitis. Uh, yep. Last time she had that, within a few days, she had a full-on mm. mouth infection mm -hmm. and in the hospital for a week because of the side effects of the medication yeah. lowering her white blood count. So. Very good. We're going to take a break in a minute. But before we do that, the other thing is I listen to you guys. It's unfortunate, but what's amazing with children when they go through these types of things, they grow up so fast. Mm -hmm. unfortunately in some ways we don't like to see it but it's amazing how all of a sudden the other thing I, I see as I hear is this this sense of unbelievable responsibility mm -hmm. at such a young age mm -hmm. you see some of these children because they have to adjust and they have to do these things all of a sudden you know some stuff that in it does it amaze you guys sometimes at different age groups how you know they really do what they need to do and they're and they're kind of troopers I oh. guess is what I'm trying to say because again it's always easy when we're all faced with things, we have choices. We could either, you know, withdraw, not handle it, not deal with it. And sometimes we do that temporarily, but eventually we get back on and get going. But that's what I notice and I see, too. Do you guys see that in your children? I mean, these troopers that take charge of their own life now, even though they're little when they start this, but they understand it and they kind of move with it. Yeah. I mean, in a weird way, it's a blessing. I mean, I feel I, I so hear you. odd yeah, saying right. that, but it's amazing the strength and the determination yeah. that Christian has been able mm -hmm. to show me. I hope he sees it in himself, you know, yeah. because he is such a strong person. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. That's so. all right. That's okay. Yeah, no, it, it does. And I could see that for sure. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break for the sake of the podcast, and then we're going to come back and we're going to rejoin these two ladies. We're going to continue talking about this wonderful, wonderful event that's coming actually in a couple more. In like 25 more yeah. days, I think. Yeah. Again, uh, this is Joe Kucher with Real Estate Radio Live. We're going to take a one-minute break. We'll be back with you in just a minute or so. Thanks. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. How would you like the opportunity to secure a record low interest rate while buying and or selling your home? In addition, how would you like to save 20% or more on your entire real estate transaction? Finally, how would you like to bundle all your real estate services in one location? Well, now you can achieve this with BundleSelect.com. That's right, save on real estate lending and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will save you thousands of dollars by bundling real estate lending and title services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using 
using your own realtor. I'm Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. I'm here to tell you BundleSelect.com is the best way to save money on real estate. By bundling services, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Visit BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker License Number 00466902. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for those that are watching us on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. Before we jump back in again, just a reminder to download the podcast. You could do that by going to reradiolive.com. You could go to iTunes, any of those normal places, type in Real Estate Radio Live. You could get the podcast. Love to have you follow the show. Today, we have Kara and Jennifer both here in our Giving Back segment. As I mentioned before, when I started the show, if you've been following us for almost eight years now, it's hard to believe, but we have, from time to time on a regular basis, tried to do our part as the show, myself and along with the show, is to allow people to come on talk about really, really important issues, concerns, health matters. It doesn't matter. We've had a number of different people on here in organizations, and so we'll continue to do that. Today is no different. We're doing the same, and so welcome back in, you guys. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank Jennifer, you. Jennifer, welcome. How are you doing? Okay. I'm doing good. See, she's Thank doing you. pretty good oh, for her first great. time, huh? Kara did a great job her first time around, so Aww. she'll be able to Sit in for me and do these shows when I need to take time off now. <laughs> so we get used to this. It's good. Well, she always makes me feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I commend you guys again, seriously, for, I know it's easier said when people say, well, you know, it's what you do. You're a mother, you're a father. When something happens to your children, I know it's easier said than done. I mean, we're all faced with different things at different levels in our life. And so I congratulate you guys, commend you for Stepping up and not only obviously, you know, taking a role of responsibility for your children, which most of us know we have, that is the number one thing that we think of, but you guys have taken it further and you've, you know, been part of an organization, you spearheaded this, you brought it over to the Silicon Valley and now bringing awareness and money to a cause that, you know, is very dear to both of your hearts. So let's talk more about the event so we could try to get as many people to support in many different ways. So again, if you could give a little bit more about the website, the information, and the fact that there's many different ways to donate money, time, that would be great. So if you want to log on to your computer and mm-hmm. type in www.siliconvalleypigjig.com. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on there you'll find patient family stories to inspire you to help. Ultimately, this event is to raise a heck of a lot of money. Mm-hmm. To continue the research that is happening with a bunch of biopharmaceutical companies and researchers around the world right Right. now to find a cure for nephrotic syndrome. So you can click on donate. You can become a sponsor. We have a lot of different levels Mm -hmm. for that. We'll take anything, a dollar, ten dollars, ten thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. We also are in need of volunteers. It's a large event. Right. Five bands. (coughs) There's a a beer garden, barbecue competition, Mm -hmm. and a kids zone. There's a lot of setting up to do. If you volunteer, we'll take good care of you, get food, some drinks, get into the, the arena there. And, yeah, have a good Very time. Good. It'll be an awesome day. That's Looking good. To it. it is going to be a great event. Tell me a little bit about the money raised. I know they've, they've done a great job. They started over in Florida. You guys are bringing it out this direction now. Is there anything that you guys have obviously you've experienced this? You've been in the middle of it for years. Can you point to anything that they're making progress on recently in the last couple of years in terms of medication or treatments or anything that you could say, boy, look at what's happened over the last couple of years? Maybe you could share that with us. Yeah. Well, I'm probably not the best person to ask, but I do know from word of mouth from Nefcure Kidney International, Mm -hmm. about two years ago, there was only one or two biopharmaceutical companies that were doing research to Mm -hmm. try and find better treatment for nephrotic syndrome patients. And they've seen the the flood of funding that's come in, more so the clients, Mm -hmm. the patient families that have tapped into Nefcure Kidney International. And because of those patient families, there's more chance for clinical trials. So to date, I think there's about nine 
Wow. by our pharmaceutical companies. One I know is in San Diego mm-hmm. and one is in the Bay Area. Great. And they are now doing <coughs> research for nephrotic syndrome, trying to find a cure. And I think maybe three companies right now are in their last clinical trial phase three, mm-hmm. which means there's potential in the next, I'm going to just say five years, don't quote right. me on it, there'll be a shelf um first yeah. ever mm-hmm. treatment for nephrotic syndrome. To date, there wow. is absolutely no FDA-approved okay. treatment for nephrotic syndrome. All right. Well, hopefully they'll make some more, continue to make progress in that area. The fact that's that they have cool. more people involved, more money, more research, because that's where it has yes. to start, right? Yes. I mean, it has mm-hmm. to start there. And you and have it, to have the patience for the clinical trials. Yeah, you so do. No, you do. And there's it. there's so many different things that are affecting people's lives. So I know that there's a lot of, there's a challenge for dollars, too, across the board for everything. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. A challenge for quite a bit. Mm-hmm. During the course of the year, I mean, I know you guys gear up for this, and this is a great event. This is like the big Super Bowl of the of the event, but uh, of, of, of this organization, if you would. I didn't want to use a baseball term, but the Super Bowl <laughs> of this event. So how about during the course of the year other than this, do you guys get involved in any other things you know, locally, around the area? Talk a little bit about that if you do. And then the other thing I want to make sure, if you guys want, mm-hmm. if someone's listening to this podcast and their family's affected, maybe they have a friend, coworker, family member, I mean, you know, could be anything. Sure. Could necessarily might not be the person listening, but maybe mm-hmm. the person listening is going, wait a minute, my aunt and you know, yes. where, you know. So if they have questions for you guys because you're right in the middle of it, would they contact you directly or go to the website? And I don't want to, you know, give out your personal information, but if there's people that want to know more and maybe their family is afflicted by this or affected by it, uh, could they reach out to either one of you? Absolutely. I mean, the support that Jen and I, if I can speak for you, have, yes. that we've been able to provide each other has just been amazing, mm-hmm. you know, just helped us so, so much. And so we would be very happy to be able to repay the favor, okay. you know, to anyone. They can go to the Pig Jig website and there's the Silicon Valley Pig Jig email. Okay. It goes directly to us. And we'd be happy to connect with anyone. You can always go to Neff Cure Kidney International. They're okay. a wonderful resource for patient families to learn, to educate, and to also provide support so that's yes. good to know yes. so that's a place for people to go and research and mm-hmm. and um i think one of the it'd be interesting to hear what you guys have to say but people react differently to things when they're impacted in their life sure. and what i mean by that some people even though to us and others might think well oh my gosh why wouldn't you reach out but that's yeah. not always the case sometimes people again withdraw you know i don't want to burden others with it you know it's my family it's my problem so what would you say Again, speaking directly to someone out there, if they're dealing with something like this, how important it is to make these connections, to reach out, to find out, you know, how they could help each other. Like, you know, you guys witnessed that and you guys, the support that you guys give each other. I mean, I personally would just say, you know, the doctors are great and they know Mm -hmm. a lot, but Mm -hmm. they don't really know what goes on, you know, in your heart and Mm -hmm. how your child reacts at home and that type of stuff. And so to be able to connect with Jen or the other moms and dads that we've met along the way to be able to say, does your son or daughter act this way? Does this happen? What happens when they get a fever? What do you do? I mean, that is just invaluable Mm -hmm. to me. You know, I can be, if it's not someone's cup of tea. I would never force, Mm -hmm. you know, a relationship or try to offer support. I'm very respectful of that. But for me personally, to be able to call someone and just ask or have a shoulder to cry on if I just needed to is just wonderful. Just coming to uh, an event like Pig Chick or any other local Mm -hmm. event for nephrotic syndrome, just being around other families is just knowing that they're out there Mm -hmm. and seeing their faces and, and the kids. Is, is a wonderful thing to have that community. Yeah. I think if there was a family that was not ready to get, you know, didn't want to really get involved and maybe didn't even want to attend an event like Pig Jig, I would highly recommend just going on to Nephrotic, or Nephrotic. Nephrotic Kidney International <laughs> okay. and just filling out an approval slip for be- just allowing the doctors to have access I to see. their files so that research can be done. Mm-hmm. Right building the clinical trial file, the patient registry for those clinical trials to happen. We have a couple minutes left. The other thing I I thought about, and I don't know if it applies to you guys if you want to, but sometimes, you know, it's important too. Are there people that you would like to recognize or acknowledge when we do this show right now? I know there's a lot of people you'll recognize at the event and during the course of the year. 
there's a lot of people that probably help you guys. You know, maybe we want to recognize your family members or someone. If you guys want to recognize anyone right now, if someone's been important to your life, to this upcoming event, uh, could be anything. I want to give you that opportunity if it warrants it, and if you would like to do that. Gosh, I don't want to leave anybody <laughs> out. I know, right? I, I, Sorry, I so didn't prepare many. you. You probably have a list. There I know. are so I know. many people. I'll bet there I are. I'll bet there are. There. Yeah, I'll bet there are. But I think in the current <coughs> day, on the day-to-day, there uh-huh. is the Pig Jig Committee, which yep. I'll let Kara speak to. Oh, they're a great group of girls. I mean, I've met them throughout the course of my mm-hmm. life. A lot of it started at Queen of Apostles School, all mm-hmm. those moms there, because they were there when Christian was first sick, and yeah. they saw us suffering, and so they just wrapped their arms around me. And then I've got this great neighborhood with some other wonderful, I mean, Terry Molinero is great, and um, a lot of support through my husband's work, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, meeting Jen, and so great, and my husband, I mean, he has to put up with a lot. <laughs> and so I'm really grateful that he's always willing to yeah, yeah that's great. stick by my side. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, I can give a shout out to my family as well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> my husband and <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> my family-in-law in Canada, they are doctors. Oh, and so okay. they've been a great support okay. if I ever have a question wow. okay. or when my daughter's getting an infusion, uh-huh. my brother-in-law will actually fly down to sit with her oh, for that neat. and That's wonderful. just make sure that we're taken care of. So thanks yeah. to the Magugans. Very Aww. good. That's really <laughs> good. Well, again, before we close out today, if you again could give give out the website, phone numbers, and then give, give everybody an overview of all the types of ways they could support and help. Sure. Go <coughs> to www.siliconvalleypigjig.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, Silicon Valley Pig Jig. It's a mouthful, but it's catchy. <laughs> it is. And it's like happening it. on October 6th at Muni Stadium, San Jose Giants Muni Stadium, from 1 to 9. That's when the doors open for the general public. However, the barbecue competition is going to be happening mm. early in the morning. We've got about 20 teams. All of those are our corporate sponsors, and they're ready to be cooking some tri-tip, ribs, Mm. and wild card. I do have to say, though, my husband is not a corporate team, but he and some buddies have formed a barbecue. Oh, they are. They're going to barbecue also. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so look out. It's for Glenn. everybody. Yeah, it's for everybody. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot um, of fun. Yes. No shortage of food. No fun, shortage of food. Great music. Great music. We need lots of volunteers. Yeah. There's three different ticket levels available, so please log on. Follow us on social media and help us spread the word about nephrotic syndrome. Very good. We will. Ladies, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in today. Hope it wasn't too painful. It was great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Thank okay, you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> this is Joe Couture with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for tuning in today. Or Again, for more information, you can always go to reradiolive.com. Thanks. Take care. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.